Hey, so today I just want to go through and, and just give you an overview of our development environment. Just kind of like how things go from start to finish. Uh, the app that we're just going to use as a demo here is Roast and Brew. And how this app works is you can see over here on the right, we have a self-hosted Git, GitLab uh, where we have a Nux.js front end and then we have a, a Laravel API back end. And then uh, what's nice is this front end not only does the code for us, for like what we're seeing here, I should say the, the UI for us, it also generates uh, a mobile app for both Android and iOS from the same code base. So that's pretty cool. Um, I just want to go through and, and show you how we get things done, not really the nitty gritties of actually how to do it. But if you have more questions on, on things, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So. Uh, the most important thing is, is that everything is running in production with containers and we're doing that with zero downtime deployments. And then also in development, since we are using containers, that means we have 100% replication of what's running in production. So this is huge time savings for us. So uh, here we have, this is production over here on the left. On the right, we have our two separate repositories. So we have Laravel API and the next. Uh, if I just go to uh, Visual uh, Studio Code here, you can see I have uh, Roast API and Roast Frontend here on the right. So they are in two separate repositories, but uh, anything from the graphical side comes from the right side here, and anything with like the backend database side is going to come here from the left. Now, how do we get a, a development environment spun up? Uh, we do not use anything like MAMP or anything like that. Uh, we need to have 100% replication of what we're running in production in our development. So what we're doing is we run uh, Docker Compose, uh, and at the end, uh, this will actually run into Docker Swarm. And so thankfully, they use the same syntax, but you can see that we have one main file, and then we can do some extensions off of there. So here we have like development, uh, we do our CI stuff, and then we get into production which uh, we'll get into that later. But just looking at the development side of things, I'm looking at my dev file. Uh, you can see that we have an internal uh, replication of, you know, it's running HTTPS and everything, of where we have an API roast.dev.test. So this is going to be local. And then if I look at the same thing here on the right, we have roast.dev.test. So if I switch back here to my Chrome, and I do uh, rows.dev.test, you can see that nothing's running yet. So uh, the first thing we do is up here in the upper right, we have Docker. And if I just kind of pull up my dashboard here, you can kind of see an example of, uh, this is what we run in production as well. We have traffic as our front end. That takes care of our HTTPS and, and reverse proxy stuff. Uh, then we get down into MariaDB, which is a fork of MySQL. And then we have Mailhog. Now, Mailhog is uh, only run in development, but it's nice because we have things set up so that when I pull down the production database from Roast and I'm running tests, that's our SMTP trap. So it's not like I'm going to be able to uh, have a process that's running in the background on my development machine and blast out uh, uh, emails to our production customers uh, from my local machine. So that's what we have there. And then you can see these two containers here are not running. So we'd have one for uh, Roast Frontend and then Roast API. So jumping back here, we can use Docker Compose commands to bring this up and this and that. But uh, between working between Dan and I, I want to simplify things. So what I did is I actually created a little helper command. So if I just kind of open up a terminal here and just do a spin up, that's the only thing that he has to do. And so you can see right away, it's just pulling node and it's, it's bringing this up. And now it's, it's running node and, and running specific commands, specifically this one. This is what we need to run in development. So npm run dev, where it does like the watching and all that other stuff. Um, while that's coming up, you can see it's, it's going to take its time. But uh, we need to do, also do this for the API, because what happens is people visit roastandbrew.coffee, and then that makes API calls to api.roastandbrew.coffee. So we need to simulate that in our environment here as well. So if I go over here on the left, 
I just run another spin up. And what's nice is this spin command is, is it, I, it's just a simple bash wrapper that I wrote. Um, basically what it does is it helps us, uh, you know, simplify some things like we can run tunnels. That's another thing too, of, uh, if we're working with a third party API, rather than pushing up to a staging server and doing all of our tests up there, we actually expose our local machine so that we can point the API to hit our tunnel. And then from that, we have all the development tools that we need uh, right here to do any testing before going through the CI process. But you can see I have like spin up, spin down, uh, and then some like other helpful commands down here for like executing and, and running commands inside those containers. So it's, it's quite helpful. Um, so you can see that we have uh, PHP is up and running over here, and I finally have a node. It takes a little bit. But you can see now I've roast and brew dot coffee and then I have roast dot dev dot test, which is 100% uh, replication of what we have, which is pretty cool. Now, what happens when we make changes to this? Um, it's nice that we can have everything replicated here, but even when we go through uh, adding code to our, our, our program here, we want to submit that up to GitLab. So if I open this up, we have the two separate repositories. Um, let's just go into the next one for now. And so here's, here's the centralized repository and everything. And then if I go into pipelines, we run it through a certain pipeline. Now, uh, you can see I've, I've been doing quite a bit of work here. Let's just look at our latest one. It's pretty straightforward. We're preparing the project, basically putting an env file in there uh, based off of which branch we're committing to. Uh, then we have just a yarn build, so it's, it's running everything from the ground up. It's, it's recompiling the app. We put it into, that, into a Docker container, and then we actually run the deployment into Docker Swarm. And what's nice is when I look at the deployment for Docker Swarm, it's going to pull this production file. And that's where we have like certain things of like our, our monitoring, uh, we do the app name stuff, uh, and then it automatically GitLab is auto filling these variables in for us. And then we can assign it a specific host of where that belongs to. So uh, all of that stuff's automated. And then the magic of that deployment here as well is, is this is just a simple site. So we're just doing one replica of that container, uh, only one at a time. And it's going to start that first container, uh, move the traffic over there and then kill the old container. So that's where we're getting our zero downtime deployments. Now, looking at, if we go back here to the actual API for Laravel, uh, and we look at the CI CD on this, we just recently added some tests to this app. And this is actually really cool because we did some upgrades and we have yet for this to, to be deployed. But it goes through the same thing. We're preparing it, we're doing the composer install. But when we got to test here, it failed. And so um, looking at these here, you can see that we're running a Docker Compose command, and uh, this is we're using PHP in it for our test, and we have a number of failures here. Uh, so, most important thing is here on why do we spend so much time on 100% replication in in development versus production? A, we can replicate. The hardest part about you know fixing an issue is replicating it. So by seeing something like this, and if we had to like push up, you can see if I go back here, uh, you know, these things are taking a full minute and a half. And, and sometimes on bigger apps, that could be up to three to five minutes. And uh, it, in the extreme apps, it, it all depends on the number of tests. This, this could take 10 minutes to deploy. So for you to push a button and wait for this computer to do that, that's, that's just not going to work. It's not scalable at all, and you're just going to waste your time. So looking at this of where we have, okay, we have some failures here. Let's pull this over into, let's do a new uh, a terminal here, and I'm just going to use a cheat code here. So I'm just going to look at my history. And now what I'm doing is running that exact same PHP unit test, and I will be able to see the failures come through. And now I can 100% confidently debug this, fix the issues, 
confirm that it's fixed, and then when I push this up, it automatically confirms that what I did is correct, and then will issue the deployment for us. So that's a huge, huge uh, breakthrough for us, especially only a two-person team. Uh, it saves us a ton of time, and uh, it automates all of our deployments, and we're getting that dopamine of just in encouraging us to to just constantly add improvements to our code confidently and then make sure that it's automated and uh, that we're not breaking things in the, in the process. So just an overview for today, but uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be glad to answer them. Thanks.